Well, the Western economic system has been so abused by the corporations who are only concerned with profits, managerial bonuses, and capital gains for shareholders. For example, the United States, by offshoring so many middle-class jobs, millions of them, in order to lower labor costs, in order to boost profits, to boost the bonuses of executives, to boost the share price, capital gains for shareholders, they have wrecked the domestic economy. If you take high productivity, high value added jobs that provide middle class incomes, rising incomes, ladders of upward mobility, and you take those jobs out of the economy and you put them in India and China, then they prosper, but your consumer market doesn't. If consumer income is not growing, aggregate demand can't grow. And therefore, the economy really can't grow. And I continue to maintain, as do others who look at this honestly and carefully, there's been no recovery in the United States from the December 2007 downturn. There's been no recovery. It's a, a myth that there's a recovery. They create it by undermeasuring inflation and by simply refusing to measure employment, uh, unemployment. They say that discouraged workers simply aren't counted. And yet we see a huge rise in discouraged workers from the continuing collapse in the labor force participation rate. So there's no recovery. There's been no recovery. And, and it's just a, a bubble economy created by the Federal Reserve's money creation, which has caused asset bubbles. So we have bubbles in stocks and bubbles in bonds and bubbles in real estate. and All of this is unwinding. It's not based on reality. In fact, we have trillions of interest rate derivatives on the books of banks that are considered too big to fail. And no one knows when one of those bets blows up. So the whole thing, as I've said before, is a house of cards. We just don't know when it goes, when it blows. And if the American economy can't grow, and there's no consumer demand, then what that means is all the offshored American production in China, for example, uh, there's no demand for it here. So the Chinese have to suffer because that part of the economy is based on the consumer demand in the United States. But by transferring the jobs out of the United States, they transferred out the income and the opportunities. And so the people here simply can't be big spenders anymore. And you have in the European governments, countries, the sovereign debt crisis. I mean, Greece is being looted, like Ireland. Uh, they're being looted, driven even deeper into poverty. The same thing is going to happen to Italy and Spain. So how are those countries going to have any consumer demand? The pensions are cut. Employment's cut. Social services are cut. Health services are cut. They're forced to sell off uh, state assets, you know, water companies, ports. This takes the money out of the country. So you can't look for any growth in consumer spending when you run an austerity policy that loots entire countries. So I don't think there's any prospect for any real economy that justifies the share prices. And I don't think the bond prices are justified by the enormous amount of fiat currency that's been created. It's just not consistent with such high bond prices. So there are many adjustments that wait to be made, and it could be a very long, drawn-out, slow decline. But year by year, people fare worse, or something dramatic could happen. So far, the Fed has been able to rig things and keep them rigged. But if troubles increase in Europe, then the willingness of the European Central Bank to support the dollar and help the Fed rig the system, that may weaken, go away. They may simply be overwhelmed by their own problems. 
Dr. Roberts, let me ask you this. Obviously, you were called in by President Reagan when he came into office. You were there with others, David Stockman. You had Paul Volcker come into the Fed, and you said to me, you know, we could save the system back then. You knew it was possible. And, and I just I wanted to ask you today, when you sit back and look at the complexity of the system now, and you knew we weren't too far gone to rescue the system in 1980, when you look at it today, is there any saving this system, or is it just a question of when it collapses? You know, there are ways that it could be saved, but there's not ways to get that enacted because, first of all, the system and what's wrong with it is not understood. You know, I understand that the entire neoliberal economics is blind, and its interpretations and explanations of things are simply false. So you have essentially a useless economics profession. So I suspect it'll either be something happens, unexpected, that the Fed can't control. You know, possibly some huge derivative bet goes wrong involving trillions. Or somehow they lose control of the dollar. That all of the support mechanisms they operate to keep the dollar up, something cracks there. In which case, anything like that happens, you could have a great big catastrophe, sudden. Nobody would know what to do. Or the Fed may be able to keep everything manipulated and rigged, and the consequence is just a very slow decline in living standards. Middle-class people, what remain of them, become poorer and poorer, and they drop into the lower class, and the lower cl- and homelessness rises, and, and you just have a general impoverishment of everyone but the 1%. That's as likely as anything. 